I, uh, yeah, this uh, subject intrigues me um, in that, uh, you know, I'm here with some benches and nothing made me happier than uh, seeing, uh, not seeing the benches, but seeing people on the benches having a conversation. And uh, in, in a sense, um, you know, this question of what one wants to do um, for me is, uh, is something to do with uh, enabling or helping because architecture, which is what I shall show you a few images of, is um, uh, a framework for social engagement um, in its entirety. I mean, it can be good or bad, but this is the essence. And uh, uh, it is interesting uh, to me that uh, we have cities that are changing at an incredible uh, pace and uh, are getting denser. This is an image of London. Um, and this gives you some idea of a changing landscape um, that is uh, part, I guess, to do with a certain narcissism, uh, but also to do with uh, a desire to uh, build buildings, to house people. London is a city of many parts, and it's my playground, so I'm going to be uh, dwelling on London in this theme a little bit. But in here, in uh, Milan, of course, uh, this, this landscape of the silhouette of a city is also changing. There will be three towers soon, uh, one by uh, Izozaki, the great ar Japanese architect, uh, the endless tower, taking uh, its cue from Brancus. Um, there will be a Liebskin, there will be a Zaha Hadid. These are emblematic um, buildings. The question is, um, whose responsibility are they in a city? It seems to me that it's a, it's a profound issue in terms of consultation and discourse. The same is true here of London, and of course off to the left is a, a magnificent building by Renzo Piano, huge, tall building. The, the question is the debate, and I, I guess that uh, the debate is very important. However, I want to um, return more to the ground, uh, to the idea of um, uh, being a kind of maintenance man, if you like, a repair uh, artist, a, um, a person who um, uh, enables through the architecture certain new things to take their part in, in an old context, which is certainly true of London. Um, so that on the ground, the big buildings, the tall buildings, of course, are creating a, an amazingly different um, world of density. These are just traffic flows for uh, a building that is actually my building, but it's taking its place um, in a very different world to uh, that which uh, was party to the space at a certain height. The things that become incredibly important then are the public domain and what that actually requires. Um, so that uh, here is this new building with a new height, a new elevation in the insurance district of the City of London. Um, and the spaces between those passages, which are historical, are very important. In this one, um, the idea is that there would be a room in the middle of the building, which is a big building, um, that is about the scale of a traditional banking hall, whose uh, roof, the soffit, uh, will in fact be a digital uh, representation of what is on top of the building, because uh, that, next please, um, is to be a public garden. Because in this rising of the city, um, the thing that is completely lacking is public space. That's something very common here in Milan as well. Um, and, uh, and so it, rather than the sea of air conditioning plant, which is the debris which we are used to in these buildings as you go higher, this intermediate level, it seems to me, uh, with public lifts accessible so that workers, importantly, in the city can find that place of uh, repose with nature and views beyond the city at lunchtime. So it's very important you get up there quickly. So this is one aspect of uh, the city of London. Uh, this is a public space that is a new public space that was completely blocked before this building um, uh, uh, was uh, put in. So this is another of the buildings in the, in the city of London, which I'm not dwelling on. Um, uh, and the other thing is the, this idea in the city that uh, 
that one needs to think architecturally not just about the exterior but the interior. The, uh, what I would call the simultaneity of sectional relationships are, are incredibly important. This is a little scheme for a livery company uh, in, the, in the city as at the epicenter of these tall buildings, the street and the quality of the interiors uh, around them are very important. Um, and the next. Yeah, so that is one side of London. I, I guess I'm also talking about context, the importance of the place. I mean, here in Milan, I find myself taking uh, images of the pavements, of uh, people passing on the, on the roads. I mean, these fantastic streets that are, could be nowhere else. They are like the genetic imprint of a place. Uh, London is made of uh, at least three cities. There's the city of the outsider um, and the theater. Uh, Shakespeare, Shakespeare's world, for instance, south of the river. Then there is the, uh, the Roman city, and then there is Westminster, the other side of the city. This requires a completely different attitude. Here, as an architect, I am an uh, enabler for other participants, and I will just show that through the work with artists. So the first scheme is uh, this block here and repairing the block, um, maintenance, if you like, at an urban scale. Uh, this is the situation. This is uh, kind of famous in terms of London. This is Eros and Piccadilly Circus with the very bright neon lights. Um, uh, and uh, looking east and west down to the parks. Um, these, these are the three buildings that I have replaced. The, this is now a site, actually. Um, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about that. Uh, this is a concept sketch at an early stage that shows the new elevation and the idea of a cornice. Um, I have made this in ceramic. And uh, this is the uh, CGI, because it's not yet built, um, of the ceramic facade with a quite strong coloration. And then the work of Richard Deacon as a cornice, which is 25 meters long. Next, please. This is his uh, maquette, uh, which we developed. Um, it's his entirely, but in conversation about heights, proportions, sizes of ceramic. Uh, and this is the way it will be. These are uh, uh, a ceramic uh, sections. There are uh, 39 that you saw before. Um, and it, in a way, the, the body of the building is, is uh, a means to allow the artist to make this piece of in, in, the, in the public domain. Uh, the same was true of a building that was quite restrained in Savile Row, working for six years with Joel Shapiro, the American artist, to put this piece of suspended bronze like a dancer in the street, a release. And the other one um, <coughs> uh, is, uh, is a, a, major, a big project uh, that I uh, was involved with, uh, of the restoration of the church and the buildings around it. But, and actually, the benches were designed for a small chapel underground. Uh, however, the, the restoration of the church, uh, the, the kind of, for me, the best thing that, that comes out of this is people go in and say, well, nothing has changed. Actually, a lot has, apart from the east window, which is the work of a, a very talented Iranian um, Muslim uh, woman uh, called Shirazi Hushiari, this uh, east window that took away the traditional uh, grid of uh, glass and made this uh, space for contemplation, which and indeed, uh, more latterly, uh, an extremely beautiful altar. Um, these, I think, I can go over the kind of uh, tabula rasa. This is the Olympic Village, um, and a block, and the problem of how to animate that um, uh, in uh, the balconies. Um, this is interesting in that there are 280. Uh, 281 units in this, uh, which will house 1,700 athletes, or about a tenth. Um, and the balconies uh, are, f uh, are full of a kind of color and chrom chromatic uh, display. And Next. finally, to the problem that really is important for all of us, the garden in the city. It seems to me building in the garden is an incredible uh, thing. This is a pleasure garden from the 18th century. And the problem of creating a, uh, a, an extension to this building, uh, on the other side of this great 18th century space, which is a, a ceramic and glass facade uh, that has transparency at the base and rises through to a solid wall. Um, the problem here of creating a, an inverse of the classical building with its uh, lightness in its urns and its rustication at the base, the inversion, a magical place 
a, a place of the satiric, uh, part of that great tradition of theatre. Thank you.